Welcome to Navigate the Microsoft Graph API with PowerShell. My name is Bradley Wyatt. I'm a manager of DevOps cloud automation at BDO Digital. And I also blog on my website, The Lazy Administrator, uh, where I write about many different topics, but mostly PowerShell. And finally, I'm a Microsoft MVP in cloud and data center management. We have a lot of content to cover today, so with that, let's get started. So for today's agenda, we're going to be going over what is the Microsoft Graph, uh, why should we use it, and how is it valuable to us and our company. Uh, next, we're going to go over and discover what kinds of data can be found within the Microsoft Graph. Uh, after that, we'll look at the API reference docs, uh, where we're going to learn how to find our endpoints uh, for our API calls, as well as what permissions are needed for each call. Uh, then I'll show you a quick glance at the Microsoft Graph Explorer. Uh, it's a helpful tool from Microsoft that allows us to learn by doing within the Microsoft Graph API, um, but it also allows us to work with sample data in a test tenant. Um, following that is the Microsoft Graph SDK, a more PowerShell friendly way to work within the Microsoft Graph API. And then finally, we'll use the more traditional invoke rest method commandlet to make API calls and view the responses. So first, what is the Microsoft Graph? Uh, the Microsoft Graph is a REST API that we can use to interact with our data that's in Microsoft 365. Uh, so REST stands for Representation State Transfer, and a REST API uses HTTP protocol, uh, and we can get, put, post, patch, and delete data. So we're gonna be learning more about those API methods in our upcoming demo. Uh, the Microsoft 365 is a suite of services that go from Office 365, so think um, Exchange Online with email, contacts, and calendar, uh, to even Teams, SharePoint, uh, Azure Active Directory, OneNote, uh, OneDrive, Yammer, etc. Um, but it also extends uh, to enterprise mobility and security, um, and even the Windows 10 family of services. So all that's data that's exposed in those different services are also going to be exposed within the Microsoft Graph API. Uh, the G Microsoft Graph API also allows us to bring in third-party data um, using Microsoft Graph connectors. So we can bring in data from outside vendors like uh, Box, Google Drive, Jira, and even Salesforce. So what's in the Microsoft Graph? Uh, so like I said, anything within the Microsoft 365 suite of products can be found within the Graph API. Uh, so we can get events from our user's calendar. Uh, we can make changes to those events, and we can even create new events for them. Um, we can view someone's organization hierarchy, so we can see who their manager is and maybe who reports to them. Um, but we can also get their presence information and even download files from their OneDrive. We can also um, send emails, Teams messages, as well as view organization uh, security alerts. Um, and the Microsoft Graph also includes built-in reports um, right out of the box, like Azure AD activity reports, uh, Microsoft 365 usage reports, and identity and access reports. So the list we see here is just a small subset of items that are exposed uh, within the Microsoft Graph API, but it gives you a bigger picture on just how much we can do, how much we can see. So our API reference docs, uh, Microsoft provides a rich detailed API documentation uh, that lets us see what endpoints we need to send requests to to do what, um, but also what permissions are needed to make the call. Uh, the permissions are always going to be ordered from least privileged to most privileged. Um, and we can access the API docs uh, from a web browser just by going to aka.ms slash graph API ref. Uh, the documentation also allows us to run sample queries using the Graph Explorer um, that by default uses a sample tenant with sample data or test data, um, but it also allows us to log in and we can actually use our own data. Uh, so we're talking about the Graph Explorer. Let's see what makes it so valuable with working with this API. So the Microsoft Graph Explorer is a web-based tool from Microsoft that lets us make requests and see the responses against the actual Graph API. Uh, by default, it uses a sample tenant uh, that's filled with a bunch of test data, but we can also log in um, using our work accounts um, and see and work with our own data that's in our tenant. We could access the Graph Explorer by going to aka.ms slash GE, GE for Graph Explorer in any web browser. Um, and I actually have it up right now. So let me just go to that and bring it over to this. 
here we go. So I've already signed into the Microsoft Graph Explorer here. Uh, we can see that right here. And then I've done a get my profile. So I could see that I'm using version one of the API. I could also select the beta endpoint. Um, and then this is the actual URL that I need to query. My request body I see is nothing because we're just doing a git. Um, but I could also see what permissions I've consented to um, and which ones that I'll need to make the, the actual call. As we see, it also gives us a description. And I get a 200 response when I ran it. And we can see all the data that's um, formatted in JSON. So I can see my display name, my mail, uh, mobile phone, so on and so forth. On our left pane here, I can see different calls that I can do. I can see applications, Excel, um, but I also see something like Microsoft to do. So I could do a git um, to get all my task lists that's actually in to do. It'll tell me which permission I need. And that's what I see right here in the description. I've already consented to it and it's already changed my URL up here and I can run this query. So once I run this query, I get a okay 200 response, how long it took and I could actually see all my lists. So if I jump over here, I could see that I have all my lists as well. Um, I can also create a new task list. So my request body here is going to have a display name that I'm going to feed it. Um, this is the endpoint I'm going to do it and it's gonna create a new task list called list created from Microsoft Graph Explorer. If I run that, I could see that it ran successfully. I could see my new list, my new task list. If I jump over here, I could see that it's right here. So as we start to learn the Microsoft Graph API, um, this Microsoft Graph Explorer gives us the ability to kind of navigate and work within the API a lot easier. Um, we could see, like I said, all our different calls that we could do over here. Um, we could do, you know, get, post, patch, delete, so on and so forth, as well as permissions. So as we're starting to get uh, familiar with the actual API, we can use the Graph Explorer to kind of figure out what we're doing. So the Graph, the Microsoft, uh, or the PowerShell SDK, um, the SDK provides a more PowerShell friendly way to connect and wor work within the Microsoft Graph. Um, instead of having to deal with endpoints and API query parameters, which we're gonna you know, learn about more later, uh, we're working with a more PowerShell friendly syntax so we're gonna, we're, we have familiar items like parameters and commandlets that mo do most of the heavy lifting behind the scenes for us. Uh, the SDK commandlets also all have a prefix of MG. So if we see git dash MG user, uh, connect dash MG graph and the MGs for Microsoft graph. And this was chosen so none of the commandlets clashed with any others from any other PowerShell modules. And then something that's more traditional is the invoke rest method. This was introduced in PowerShell, uh, Windows PowerShell 3.0. Um, and a benefit of using invoke rest method commandlet um, as opposed to you know, the SDK suite of tools is once you learn how to use invoke rest method, uh, we can apply that to other restful APIs. So once you learn how to do the all the syntax that is associated with invoke rest method, we can uh, use it and apply it against other REST APIs as well. So there's no need to figure out what commandlets we need to use or what parameters, um, like with the SDK. You just need to look at the endpoints and permissions required. So again, we need to just look into that API reference docs. Um, all we need to know is the permissions we need, um, as well as the endpoint we need to query. And then when new items are added to the API, we don't need to sit here and wait for the SDK to finish and adding the new functionality. Um, with those endpoints as well as you know any parameters they need and testing um, once the actual API has it you know invoke rest method can be used and we can start working with that data immediately so with that let's get started on a demo and dig into the actual code so if I come over here to my actual demo um, first thing we're going to do is do the SDK demo so again the SDK is another way that we can connect to the Microsoft Graph. Um, it's a suite of tools. So there's thousands of commandlets behind here, but they do everything um, that we see normally within the actual um, API. So if we did invoke REST method. So the Microsoft.Graph module is available on the PowerShell gallery, um, and it's a meta module. So it's gonna pull in a whole uh, set of other modules associated with the Microsoft Graph. Um, so we'll also see different ones like Microsoft 
microsoft.graph.teams to manage our teams, microsoft.graph.users to manage our users. So the microsoft.graph module um, contains a lot other sub-modules beneath it. So to install it with PowerShell, we're just going to do install-module, give it the name parameter, and then microsoft.graph. So I already have this module installed here. And then we, next we want to see is we want to get the commands that are actually within this module. So I'm going to use git dash command commandlet with the dash module parameter and then microsoft.graph and then an asterisk. Because again, this is a uh, meta module and there's a lot of other modules beneath it, but they all share the same naming convention, microsoft.graph. So I'm going to pipe all that. Well, I'm going to send all that to our commands variable here. And I'll let that run. And then I just want to do a dot count to see how many commands that were found. So right now, today, at the time of recording, we have 6,382 different commands that are all within the Microsoft.graph meta module. Another cool thing is uh, we could do git dash mg profile. And this is going to tell us which API that we're currently going to be using. So right now I'm using the version.1. Um, we can change it to the beta endpoint by just doing select dash mg profile with the name parameter and then beta. Um, when Microsoft is testing things out that are coming out for the Microsoft Graph API, they're first going to be introduced to the beta endpoint, um, the actual beta API. Things are subject to change there, so you don't want to really hard code and put anything into production. Um, but once they are all standardized and tested thoroughly, uh, then they then move to the version 1.0. So if we wanted to change between each API, we just had to do select dash mg profile um, and just give it the name. So if we want to connect to the actual Microsoft Graph API, um, we would use connect dash mg graph and we give it the scopes parameter. Um, the scopes parameter is telling what permissions we want to connect with. Um, by default, connect-mg-graph um, uses a device code flow grant. Uh, so when we want to connect to Microsoft Graph, it's going to tell us to go to a certain website, put in a code, and then we just sign in like we normally would. Um, if you've already signed in, it's going to use um, the refresh token to just sign you back in, no prompts needed. Um, if you've ever deployed Microsoft Teams phones um, and you see where you have to sign in, some most phones will say, you know, go to a web browser, put in this code, and then you sign in. That uses Microsoft code uh, device code flow grant as well. So I'm going to connect to Microsoft Graph using uh, the permissions user.readall and directory.readall. And because I've already connected to Microsoft Graph, it just uses my refresh token. And I see that I'm already connected by saying, welcome to Microsoft Graph. So the first thing I want to do is simple. I want to get all the users that are in my Azure AD directory. I'm going to go ahead and do git dash mg user and then do the all parameter. If I run that, I see that I've gotten all of my users here in my test tenant. Now I can do a filter parameter as we'll learn in the API demo. This is the syntax is totally different, um, but because this is the PowerShell SDK, um, they made it a lot more PowerShell friendly, like I said. So instead of doing all the, you know, different URL changes to actually do our query parameters, our filter parameters here, um, we're just going to give it the fil dash filter parameter. So we're going to do git dash mg user do the filter parameter, and I'm going to say display name equals Bradley Wyatt, and I'm going to save the results to the me variable. So if I run that here, it runs successfully. And then in the next part, I'm going to do a query parameter again. Um, so I'm going to get dash mg user. I'm going to do user ID and do me.id. So since I got myself in this variable up here, which we see, it's going to give it the property ID. And then I only want to get several properties. So as we see here, I, it pulled the ID property, display name, mail, user principal name. And if I do a format list, I'll see that I actually got a lot more than, I, than what was shown there. Um, the dash property parameter is going to tell the graph API to only return these properties. 
So if I run this, we see that everything else is just null. There's nothing there. I only have the display name and the mail. So um, if we had, if we did this with a lot of users and a lot of different properties, it could be uh, performance-wise quicker. Um, this is different than if you just did all your users, you stuck it in a variable, and then you pipe that to where object is, um, because that's returning everything, all the properties for all our users. Um, this is actually doing it on the API side if we did dash property. So for our next demo, I want to add a couple more permissions. So I'm going to connect dash mg graph again, and I'm going to add my new permissions here. So this time I'm doing user.readwrite.all and directory.readwrite.all. If we look above, I first connected with just read permissions. So this one I want to actually create a new user. So I have a splat here for our new user info. I have a display name, Polly PowerShell, a mail nickname, Polly.PowerShell, a user principal name, where I have Polly.PowerShell at the lazyadministrator.com, and then a password profile. And these are all required. Um, so my password profile here is a force change password at next sign in, which I gave it a true force change password next sign in with MFA false, and then just a temporary password. So if I add all of this, and then I'm just going to splat this with new dash MG user, um, the account is going to be enabled. So I use that parameter and then there's my splat. You know what? I think I did not delete my other user. So if I go over here, because I'm already logged in, and I look up this user, poly.powershell, I'm going to go ahead and delete this user. All right, so poly PowerShell has been deleted. So let's go ahead and try that again. So I'll do new dash MG user, account enabled, and then my splat. And this time it works. So I see that I have my ID for poly PowerShell, the display name. Uh, he has no mail uh, right now. And then I see the user principal name. So the new dash mg user is doing a post. If you remember, we had different things. So patch is for update, uh, get is for getting item, um, and then post. Post are, since this is the SDK, um, new dash is going to do the actual post. So we're going to connect to Microsoft Graph again with different permissions here. So I want to do group.readwrite.all team.readbasic.all and teammember.read.write.all. So in this example, I want to go ahead and create a new team, add a new owner to it, and then I also want to um, send a message to that team. So I'm going to connect to Graph. Since I'm already connected, it's just going to use my refresh token. Welcome to Microsoft Graph. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a team for PowerShell Summit. So I'll do the new dash MG team, which again is doing post. Give it a display name using this parameter. So it'll be called PowerShell Summit, a valid description, and then additional properties. So I'm just going to give it uh, the default Teams template. And if I go ahead and run this, my new team will be created in Azure Active Directory. So as we see, there is no errors. So I want to go ahead and get my new team by looking up the group. Because remember, uh, teams are just groups behind the scenes. So if I do git dash mg group, which is which uses git, that if we're more familiar with APIs, it uses git. And then I'm going to do my qu uh, query parameter dash filter. And then I'm going to do display name equals PowerShell summit. So I'm going to save all that in my variable team. And then if I just see what's inside that variable, I could see that I have my one group. And we can see the group type is unified. So now I want to add myself as a team owner. So I'm going to do, and again, this uses uh, um, post. So new dash MG team member, I'm going to give that ID and that's me. So I already added, I uh, already put my user in this variable uh, dollar sign me, give the ID, our new teams ID here, my role, I want to be an owner, and then just some additional properties as well. So we could see that the URL um, is looking for me. So if I run this, I could see that I'm a team owner now. Now I should be able to see it right here. Yep, it's already in my team. If I come over here, I'm gonna go ahead and send a welcome message now to this newly created team. So first using git dash mg team primary channel, I wanna go ahead and get the primary channel 
for this newly created team. I'll save this to the variable primary channel. See what's in there and I see it. And then doing new dash MG team channel message. I'll give it the team ID, the channel ID that we got above, and then the body. So I'm just going to say welcome to teams. Looks like that ran successfully. If I jump over, I see my new message. I see me and I see the message that I had just sent. So the actual API, as we see here, this I connected using my, on behalf of myself. Um, with the SDK, since it wanted me to log in, it's using all the permissions that I myself have. Um, with the API, we're going to be connecting a little bit differently. We're gonna use an Azure Active Directory application. Um, and the permissions are going to be assigned to this Azure AD application. So think of the Azure AD application sort of like us as a user. Um, so we're going to be connecting as this application and all the permissions that we're going to inherit are going to be assigned to this actual application. So using the SDK, I'm going to go ahead and create this new Azure application. So using this splat here, I'm going to give it a new display name, PS Summit. My redirect URL, which is just localhost, and then some implicit grant settings. So I want to go ahead and enable access token issuance, true, and enable ID token issuance. So I'm going to go ahead and add all that. And then using new dash MG application, which again is using post, I'm going to splat that and we're going to have our new application. So now if I jump over to, if I bring over Azure AD and I go to app registrations, all applications, and I should type PS summit. So I see it right here. Right now it was just created. Here's our application or client ID. If I go to API permissions, I don't have any API permissions right now um, as we just created this. So let's go ahead and get our new app, Azure AD application. We're doing git dash MG application. We're doing a filter. So we're another query parameter and we're gonna save all this to our Azure app. If I see what's inside there, I see that it got our new Azure application and now I want to add a secret. Right now, if we go over here and we see uh, certificates and secrets, there's nothing there. So the secret's going to be kind of like our password that we're using to connect to the Microsoft Graph API. So using add-mg application password, we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a new Azure AD application password. And Add dash MG application password, I believe is using patch. So if I want to go ahead and see my app secret now, we see my secret text, which I'll go ahead and copy that over. And just for demo purposes, uh, I'm putting all this in plain text so we could all see it. And then next we're going to go ahead and um, add the permissions that we'll need for the API demo. Also, if I bring this back down, we'll see my Azure application now has this active password. So I'll bring that back up. Um, so we're gonna add uh, sites.read.all, directory.read.write.all, and files.read.write.all for our API demo. So as we see here, I've gotten all the IDs um, because these are application permissions, this type is role. Um, otherwise, it would be scope if it's on behalf of a user. Um, if we want to go ahead and, and try to figure out what uh, our IDs are for each permission, we can actually do that within the Azure CLI. And here's the command. Um, this ID here is for the Microsoft Graph. This URL here um, shows us a lot of different uh, IDs depending on what you're doing and we could see that this one is for Microsoft Graph. So I already have this in Azure CLI. So this is how I got all my actual IDs for what permission is. I could see the type is user. So that would be scope. Um, and I just did a control F and found all the permissions that I want. So we could see cloud.pc.read.all. Um, if I go over here, chat message.send, um, so on and so forth. So using update-mg application, which uses patch, I'm going to feed it our application ID. 
I'm also going to give it the parameter required resource access. Here again is the ID for the Microsoft Graph API and then what I want to have permission for. So I see that I have my three permissions, which again are sites.read.all, directory read write all, and files read write all. So I can go ahead and run this. And then if I bring this back down, these are permissions that affect um, not just me, but all my users within my tenant. So they need to, um, they need to be approved. So if I go to API permissions here, I need a grant admin consent for the lazy administrator, which is my tenant. Um, right now I see all my actual permissions here, but they haven't been granted. So if I were to try to log in, they wouldn't work. So I could just grant admin consent. And now this application has the required permissions. Another thing we're going to have to change here is under authentication. Uh, we just want to allow public client flows because we're going to be doing the device code flow example. So um, we went ahead and went into the portal and granted admin consent. We also allowed the public client flows because in our API demo, we're going to do the device code flow to get uh, a refresh token and then use that refresh token to um, refresh our, give ourselves a new access token. So with that, I could just do disconnect dash MG graph and disconnect from the Microsoft graph. Um, with the SDK, if you saw in the beginning, since I've already connected to it before, I already have a refresh token. Um, so it's going to use that refresh token to give ourselves a new valid access token because the access token is only valid for, I believe, one hour. So our API demo here, I have to get our client ID, which is my application. So application client ID, I'll just copy that. paste it here. I see my tenant name that I've already gotten and then my client secret that we created with the SDK. I saved all these in the in these variables. And then the, the grant type we're going to use is client credentials. So last time we used device code flow. <coughs> um, this time we're using client credentials. Um, there are a couple other ones as well. Um, there were not uh, another one we're going to go into is the refresh token. So I could see my scope here is dot default. So if we saw over here when I was connecting, I gave it dash scopes parameter and I specified which scopes I wanted, you know, which permissions I wanted to bring in. Dot default says whatever permissions I have, bring them all in. I want them all. So our client ID and client secret. So let's go ahead and run all this. And then let's do an invoke rest method. Our URL is this, so we could go ahead and get our new token and our method is post. So we see here our token type is bear. Here's my access token and this is the actual token. This is a JSON web token, so JWT. And this is the token we're passing to Microsoft Graph to allow us to actually you know, get data, return it and change it. So I can inspect this JWT token, our actual access token, by using a PowerShell module, JWT details. Um, this is available on the PowerShell gallery. It was made by Darren J. Robinson, another Microsoft MVP, as well as all the code is up there on GitHub. So I'm gonna do git dash JWT details and pass my new token. I can see my time to expiration is 59 minutes, um, but I also can see all the permissions that I went ahead and I have right now. So I have three permissions um, that we saw in here under API permissions. So because I did dot default, it brought them all with, and then we could see our app display name as well. So our first item that we're gonna do is we're going to get all SharePoint sites this time. So I have a splat called request. My method is going to be git. I have my URI, so it's going to be version.1 because we're not using the beta endpoint, and then dash sites. Content type is application.json, and then our headers are going to contain our actual access token that we just got. So I'm going to do the invoke rest method and splat that and save it all to the data variable. Then I want to go ahead and get all my sites. 
So I'll format that out to a list. So I see all my sites here, and then I could do a dot count and see that I have 21 sites. So you, we could see the differences from the SDK to the actual API. Um, we can see that the SDK to get sites probably would have been, you know, get dash MG site. Um, it's going to do all our headers and the actual URI and the method. So all this that we see here is going to be handled behind the scenes. Um, but with the API um, invoke rest method, we're able to kind of do all this. We don't have to wait for, you know, any changes um, within the actual API. We don't need to wait for these command lists to be created. Um, and we kind of, it's very easy for us to just work within this API. So now I'm going to get all users similar to what we did with the SDK. So my method is get, I'm going to do version.1 and just go to users. And if I didn't know where this URL was, I would just reference the reference docs. Um, again, pass our access token. And let's go ahead and get all our users within our tenant. If I see what's in this users variable, I can see here's all my users. If I wanted to see how many users I have in my tenant, I could see that I currently have 80 test users. So now we're going to use a query parameter to get my account. So if we saw in the SDK demo, we would do dash filter parameter. Here's where we can see the differences. So it's going to be a get method and the URI we can see is version one dot users. And then we do a question mark here and then a dollar filter because it's PowerShell. I added this back tick. So because I wanted it to pass the actual dollar sign um, and then display name equals Bradley Wyatt. So we can see the differences within this URI and how much easier it is within the actual SDK. We just kind of need to know how to format this. And let me just go ahead and get me. So we can see users.count is one. And if I look to see what's inside this variable, I can see that there's just me. So now with batching, we can do multiple requests just with one single call. Um, in this example, I want to get all my users in my environment as well as groups. Um, another example is if you wanted to create a bunch of files, you could just create all your files within this batch body um, and then just do the one API call and it's going to do it recursively. Or if you wanted to delete a bunch of files, um, but if you wanted to do multiple things within the actual graph API um, and batch your requests into a single one, you would use batching. So with here, I'm going to do my batch body, which I see I have my ID, my method, and URLs. And then my method this time is post. And I see my URI is batch. So I'm going to send, and my body is going to contain this, my actual body. So if I do this request here, and then I invoke rest method and save that to batch res. So if I wanted to show all my users, I'm going to go ahead and parse these results, look at the response property, and then I'm piping that to where object and ID equals one, which I said right here and then right here. So if I do that, I see all of my users here. Now, if I wanted to get all my groups, I'm going to go ahead and do the responses property again and where object ID equals two. I'll save all that to my groups variable. And if I want all my groups, they're right here. So now we're going to use patch to update a file in our OneDrive. This requires files.readwrite.all. If I went ahead and went up, I could see that um, my when I did my JWT, I could see that I have that permissions. So files.readwrite.all. So if I come back down, my method again is going to be git. My URI is going to be me. So I see my Brad at the Lazy Administrator UPN, my drive, and I'm going to look for items. In my root, here's my folder called upload dummy file01.rtf. So I want to go ahead and show you this file. So we see right here, here's my file, file01.rtf. I made it today at 12.38 p.m. If I come back over here, I will get this file. So if I run this and see what's contained within this variable first file, I see that it found my file here. So I could see my web URL. I could also have a download URL. So here, here we are if I wanted to download the actual file. Now I want to update this file. 
I want to change the name. I want it to be a docx and I want it to be called new dash file, new dash file dash name. This method now is going to be a patch. I'm going to actually give it the first file variable and that ID property. So if we saw here, it's just going to pass this. The body is going to contain my new file name that I created here, which is JSON. So if I run this, oh, you know what? I think I did not, let me try this again. There we go. So if I come back over here, I could see that now it's a docx. So I have a new dash file dash name. That's my new file that I just created. So now I don't want the file anymore. I want to go ahead and delete this file. So my method now is going to be delete. The URI is going to be this first file.id. So I'm going to pass this ID because the ID doesn't change. And then if I go over, it's no longer there. All right, so the next item we're going to do is our refresh token. So we have to make sure our application um, allows public client flows. That's what we enabled when we actually uh, created the application within the SDK. Um, and with the SDK, like you saw, since I already was signing in again, it used my refresh token because I had already signed in um, and it used the refresh token to give myself a new access token. Um, so with refresh tokens, um, this is only with the grants that are when you're signing in on behalf of a user. Um, so with our earlier way that we signed in here using the API uh, client credentials, it doesn't work. Um, and here we're able to make it so we don't have to keep signing in um, over and over again using the actual refresh token. So if I come down here, I'm going to go ahead and do a post. Um, this is my tenant ID here, and this is our full URI. And then we're going to do an invoke rest method against that. And it's going to tell me to go to a certain website and put in a code. So if I come in over here and then I see what's with, and then I do my invoke rest method. And then I want to go ahead and see that message. It's going to tell me to sign in, use a web browser to open the page this page and enter this code. So I'm going to go ahead and command click this. And then I see that it says enter our code. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up, copy my code, bring this back down, insert the code. I'll click next. I'm going to sign in as my account here. And then permissions requested. Um, I'm going to see that PS Summit, that's the name of my Azure ED application. These are the permissions it would like to have. I'm going to accept this, and that's all I have to do. So I'll bring this back up. Now, using that device code that was in that request, I'm going to go ahead and get my refresh token. So again, we see the URI contains my tenant ID and then OAuth2 token. If I view uh, token request dot refresh token. I should have a valid refresh token. I'm going to use get dash JWT details with that access token and see when it expires. So currently it expires in 59 minutes and 38 seconds. Now using our refresh token that we just got, I'm going to ask to get a new access token. So if this had expired, I could use our refresh token to get a new valid access token for the graph API. So again, our URI contains my tenant ID here. My grant type now is going to be refresh underscore, underscore token, and this method is a post, and I'm gonna feed it my refresh token. So if I do this request, and then I do an invoke rest method to get a new token, and then doing git dash JWT details with that new token, this one expires in 59 minutes and 53 seconds. So we can see that I got a completely new access token. And with this access token, I can go in and do everything that I did above. So I can do all my methods of git, dash, uh, git post, patch, um, and work within the actual Microsoft graph. So um, with that, 
Um, we saw how we can use the Microsoft Graph SDK, which is much more PowerShell friendly way to connect and work within the Microsoft Graph. We saw how our query parameters are, are different. Um, we don't need to format it within the actual URI. Um, we also saw the differences between um, the actual SDK and if we were to use invoke rest method. Um, we also went through the different methods within the API. So we saw how we could get stuff, how we can update items as we updated our text file. We also saw how we could do post to change something or to add something new um, as well as delete because we deleted our actual file. So we saw how these methods are changed within um, the SDK because of the, the actual um, commandlet name. So get dash, you know, MG user, um, and then we'll have, you know, new dash MG user. So by changing the actual commandlet, it's doing something else in the background. So we saw how the SDK kind of handles a lot more within the, you know, behind the scenes. Um, but the actual using invoke rest method um, lets us familiarize ourselves with the API um, a lot easier. And it's not at all super confusing or anything. Um, so everything you saw here, uh, my slide deck and all my code is going to be up on my GitHub. So you can access that at github.com slash bwi77 slash PowerShell Summit. Um, go ahead and download all that. Um, familiarize yourself. Learn how, you know, learn within the actual API. You know, use Graph Explorer and the API reference docs um, to see what permissions you need as well as what URLs. Um, if you have any issues or comments or questions, you could go ahead and tweet me at BWI77. Um, go ahead and look at my blog, The Lazy Administrator. And you can also reach me at my email, uh, brad at thelazyadministrator.com. So with that, I want to thank you uh, for joining this session.